comic books, a form of literature that started back in the 1930s. They tell fantastic stories about heroes, villains, sidekicks, and anti-heroes. They open the door to a whole nother world, and we go on these journeys with these characters. But one would have to wonder, what goes on in the comic book shops that they are currently housed in? Many of them started back in the late 1960s and have risen since then. Due to the fact that pop culture, comic book characters have appeared in many forms of other media, such as television, film, and merchandising. In Woodbridge, there's a nice little shop called Flashback Comics, which sells paperbacks and graphic novels. My name is Troy David Phillips, and I am the general store manager at Flashback Comics. As a comic book shop first opens, it has to find some ground of stabilizing as a business. With some word of mouth, some advertising, and as people would come in and they would see the stock, they would see what we had to offer, then I would stop and spend time with each person personally, you know, and take them over to a box. Somebody would ask me what they were looking for. Instead of just telling them that it's over there in that box, go to the box and go through it with them, pull it out so they can see it, and talk to them about what it is they're looking at. Sometimes running a comic book shop depends on how well connected the staff is to the customers. I spend the majority of my time here. I actually spend more time here than the store owner himself. My expertise, as I know the stories, you know, as I know the characters' histories, aspects of the creative teams, the writers, the artists, etc. I interface more with the comic customer and collectors. Honestly, I think it's the it's it's the FaceTime. You know, it's the fact that when people walk in, I address oh, what we them, got here. very willing to step out from behind the counter and help them. If I am already not doing something, I will help you. And if I am doing something, I'll just beg your patience for a moment and I will get to you as quickly as I can. I try to be family friendly. I like to, you know, I'm wearing jeans and a t-shirt right now, but I do feel like my appearance has to be reasonably acceptable. It's a lot of comic book t-shirts because I work in a comic book store, but my shirts are clean. I don't like to use profanity on a personal level, it's, and I don't do it in the store because I have people bringing their children. As a comic book store owner, you would have to consider certain things to help keep your business afloat, such as profit, advertising for your business, location, and the amount of customers you would get per day. But since the internet has progressed through time, it makes it difficult for comic book shop owners to stay in business. Because you can buy comics online with Amazon, Kindle apps, Kindles, and on cell phones, iPhones, and iPads. Well, with digital comics, people that read digital comics do so because they, generally speaking, are either on the go or they just don't have space to store physical copies. People that collect, that want physical copies, aren't the customers that are, you know, with Amazon or Comixology in the first place. Otherwise, it's, you know, really, again, you know, there's some word of mouth that goes with this, but the nature of the collector is an individual who wants to have that physical copy in hand. They like developing trust with me. They, you know, we have a face-to-face -face relationship. So they come in, they ask me about something, I show it to them, and they can see it in their hands. They're not taking the risk that buying it online, when it arrives, it may not be what they thought it was going to be. Considering that comic book shops are competing with the internet, they would have to consider reasonable prices to get people to come in and buy from them. Average comic book price goes anywhere between $2.99 and $3.99. The difference, there are a lot of differences, not least of which is the cost of producing the book. People may not think about it, but ink requires petroleum. Well, if the price of oil has gone up, then guess what that has impacted? Not just gas prices, but printing prices. Paper being what it is, and the paper of comics today is significantly better than the self-destructible newsprint of old. Creative teams, the writer, the artist, the inker, the colorist, everybody involved in the comic, everybody in the credits, is receiving a residual payment. So the fact that the comic costs more also means that these people are being paid better. Once upon a time, comic creators didn't make a lot of money in terms of the publishing industry. Collector, comic creators were probably the least well paid, but now these guys can actually make a living wage 
writing a comic, producing, you know, and if the comic is good, Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo on the New 52 iteration of the Batman, that book sold very well and they were able to reap a benefit from that. So there's that. When it comes to comic book shops making profit, they not only have to think about the sales of comics, they also have to think about what else could they sell to get themselves more customers. Well, we also carry the trade paperback compilations, the collections, uh, graphic novels. There, there is a difference between a graphic novel and a trade paperback, but I carry both. Statues and other peripherals, so toys, action figures. Action figures that are toys intended to be played with, as well as collectible action figures that are more highly detailed, that are clearly not toys. A lot of the peripherals, a lot of uh, art prints, posters, lots of little things, you know, sometimes you know, knickknacks, tchotchkes, things that you want, oh, whatever you want to call them. But comics are the dominant part. During the day-to-day -day operations of a comic book shop, one would have to consider what to do when you don't get that many customers or you don't get that many sales. You make it up on a different day. On a day where it's slower and I'm not doing as much, uh, you know, cash transaction, you know, not as much money transaction, then uh, those are days that I spend organizing, filing, trying to tidy up. And then there will be another day that kind of makes up for that. The nature of the collector, if they're not here one day, they will be here later. And so if... 50 people don't show up in the first half of the month, I will see those 50 people at the end of the month, which brings a much bigger day, an uncharacteristically bigger day. As the entertainment industry continues to put out movies and television shows based on these iconic characters, what would have to consider? Do they get more customers because of those? Or is it about the same range of customers that they get per day? A lot of foot traffic. I see a lot of people interested in the properties that they've seen, that not necessarily that they wish to become collectors, but if it's something that they can access easily. You know, if, you, have you, if you've just seen the Deadpool movie and you want to walk in and, oh, well, here's a collection of Deadpool stories from the 1990s, that's actually an easy access. If you have just come out of the Deadpool movie and the first thing you see is a copy of New Mutants 98, which, you know, in high grade, a copy of that book is anywhere from 700 to $1,000, the average film goer is not interested in investing in that. As entertainment continues to push out media containing these heroes, villains, sidekicks, and anti-heroes, one would have to consider how long will they stay open in the future? There's a lot of competition for the attention of a collector. Sometimes the cross-pollination, and by what I mean by that is, for example, Injustice, God's Among Us. It's a video game that also has a comic, and it's well known to people who do one or the other and both. So the existence of the game makes the comic popular. The existence of the comic brings attention to the game. Similarly, Batman, Arkham Knight, and so on. So having one of these platforms, using it to bring attention to the other one, is smart marketing on both the video game and the publisher's behalf. There are only so many hours in a day, and there's only so much money in each of our pockets. So people have to shop smarter. When you're reading a book, it has to be a book that you are really, truly yes. invested in. So if you're reading Batman, if you're reading The Walking Dead, if you're reading Star Trek or the Star Wars titles, these are books that you are probably very passionately involved in. If you're not reading other things, there might be reasons like, I don't have enough room to collect, you know, 200 comics a month. I don't have enough money to collect all these things. I, I don't have enough time to read all these things. So I'm passionate about a few things. As comic cons are a huge thing across the country, we wondered how comic book shops have advertised there or if they just advertise through what they said, like social media or so. To an extent, yes, we do. A lot of word of mouth, you know, and of course, handing out of uh, business cards. You know, I go and I meet with other people, you know, promoters and publishers, other stores also. So it does sometimes bring an additional traffic. Establishing a relationship with a store that's outside of my circle, uh, I may have comics that could benefit them. They may have comics that could benefit me. We're not stealing each other's customers so we can establish a friendly relationship thusly. As pop culture continues to reincarnate through film and television with Marvel and DC, there will always be a form of literature that centers on heroes, villains, anti-heroes, and sidekicks. Therefore, there will always be a need for comic book shops. 